Hello everybody, welcome to Shane and Stuff. Today I am going to play Eldritch Horror with the Under the Pyramids expansion. As in my previous Eldritch Horror videos, this is not a how to play. I highly recommend the Rules Girls how to play Eldritch Horror video. It's the quickest and most concise way to see how the game works. You will learn a lot as you watch, uh, but as you can see I already have the game set up and I'm just going to go briefly through uh, the details of the Under the Pyramids scenario and then I will get started. So I wanted to play Under the Pyramids in the most Indiana Jones style way. Uh, so I am playing with the adventure cards, uh, which gives it a little more uh, sort of plot and things to go after and you'll get some rewards, uh, as well as the sideboard. So to do that, I have picked the Under the Pyramids prelude card. So let's go ahead and read how this starts. Bruised, dehydrated, and short of breath, you lean against the limestone pillar, gasping for air. Behind you, a black pit in the sand reveals the entrance to some lost passage beneath the pyramid. Your skin is raw and bloodied where the ropes chafed you. By luck, you escaped, but soon your captors will notice your absence. The roar of some profane creature echoes forth from the pit, and you fear that your presence here is not gone unnoticed. All right, so basically during step five of Determine the Ancient One, I set up the Egypt sideboard, and if it's Nefrenka, you do some stuff, but if it's not, you set aside all the museum heist adventures, then draw the Framed for Theft adventure. So we are playing against Abhoth, uh, one of the other baddies in the Under the Pyramids expansion. And this is the Framed for Theft adventure card. So you'll go through this museum heist, and then after you complete this one, then you'll draw one of the step two ones from random, and same with step three, and then on to step four, which is the resolution. So let's go ahead and read this. Framed for theft. Museum Heist 1. The talisman of Wajet, an amulet meant to protect the pharaohs in the afterlife, has been stolen. The police suspect a man named Eric Weiss, but your gut tells you he is innocent. So when this card enters play, place an adventure token on Cairo, which I have done way over there. So as an encounter, an investigator on Cairo may attempt to convince the police that Eric has been framed. So to do that, basically, you go to Cairo and you encounter that token. And then you do a influence check. And if you pass, the police release Eric into your custody under the condition that he apprehends the thief and complete this adventure. So you'll gain, so when the adventure is completed, you gain the Eric Weiss unique asset. Then you go, then you draw a random Museum Heist 2 adventure. Now let's move on to the details of Abhoth. Abhoth lies deep within the heart of Mount Vor... <clears throat> Abhoth lies deep within the heart of Mount Vormithadreth. There, from the cesspit of Yukwa, it sends forth its revolting children, extending its reach across the earth. So, uh, Abhoth, uh, you set aside eight cultist monsters and all Abhoth special encounters. So I've got these cultist monsters set aside here, and the Abhoth special encounters up there. And so whenever an investigator encounters a cultist monster, he draws and resolves a spawn of Abhoth encounter. So basically, uh, there will be, so basically uh, you'll see here, um, when there's a reckoning, the lead investigator spawns one cultist monster on a wilderness space that does not contain a cultist monster. So you'll, you'll pull those directly from the ones set aside. I think there might be other effects that uh, bring them out from there. They can also come out randomly in the Monster Cup because there are still other cultists there. But anytime you encounter a cultist, you have a spawn of Abhoth special encounter instead of, you know, the normal way you fight cultists. So the Doom uh, token is on space 14 of the Doom track out there. As always, uh, when three mysteries have been solved, investigators win the game. If Abhoth awakens, Doom gets to zero. Uh, flip the sheet and resolve the Abhoth Awakens effect. And, you know, in Eldritch Horror, I try to never look at anything until I am told to. You, and you're not supposed to look at the back of spells because they're spells that have different effects once you've done stuff with them on the back. And the game is just so much more fun when you leave things a mystery. So, the Mythos deck I have constructed, and I uh, constructed it with all Under the Pyramids Mythos cards. In my previous two videos, I did the same thing, and I find it gives you a much more thematic game with whichever ancient one you're playing against. So I highly recommend doing that. However, it can make it a little harder sometimes, depending on the scenario you're playing. Because, you know, 
There's ways to make things easier when you construct your mythos deck or harder, or you could go fully random from all of the um, mythos cards you have. Uh, but that's all basically for Abha. And speaking of using all you have, I will be playing with resource tokens. These come in the masks of Nyarlathotep uh, expansion. Uh, the way resource works, resources work, they're similar to focus tokens where you can use an action to gather resource sources, gain one, max of two, just like the acquire asset, um, I'm sorry, the uh, focus. And the way you use a resource is when you rest, you can spend any number of resources, so up to your maximum two, to recover an additional sanity or health for each one spent. Or when you acquire assets, you can spend resources for additional successes. So you can spend a resource for extra successes. This could be extremely useful. Uh, allowing you to get good assets from the reserve without having to take a debt condition. However, like everything, it's an extra tool you can use, but it'll always use up one of your precious actions. So now let's talk about the Egypt sideboard for a little bit. So um, as always, there are local pads on the sideboard. Local pads, basically, uh, you can travel between local pads without spending a movement action. So. Uh, there's a local path from the pyramids on the board uh, to the Bent Pyramid, Alexandria, Tel El Amarna, and Cairo. So basically, as long as I'm if I'm at the pyramids, I can go to any one of the, those, and if I'm at any one of them, I can go between them without spending a movement action. However, to get to uh, well, also the Nile River is connected to the heart of Africa, which is here via local path. And the Sahara Desert is connected to Space 10, which is here. So Tel El Amarna and Nile River are connected by a river. Uh, Cairo is connected to Space 17, which is here by a river. And Alexandria and the Sahara Desert are connected by an uncharted path. I was saying river paths, I meant ship paths. So also, during setup, set aside one mummy monster, one Sand Dweller monster, and one Spawn of Sabak monster. So I have those here. And then it just explains local paths. So that's the Egypt sideboard. Uh, also, so Sahara Desert says I can improve skills. Uh, and if you know, all of the major locations will have a little banner under them, and it'll kind of say what that encounter deck for that location, what you get in general. You know, like Tokyo, you can defeat monsters, or you know, Tel El Armana, you can gain clues. Now, it doesn't always happen that way, but usually if you don't get what it says you do, you get something pretty good. So, Alexandria, gain glamour spells. Bent Pyramid, gain artifacts. I love artifacts. Cairo, gain relic unique assets. And Tel El Armana, gain clues. And the Nile River, recover health and sanity. That's nice. You know, a little, little respite on the Nile. But, you know, you could be going mad, but maybe you're just in denial. All right, let's move on to the investigators. I am playing with Mandy Thompson, the researcher. As an action, she can draw two clues from the clue pool, spawn one of them, and discard the other. And after resolving a research encounter, if you gained exactly one clue from that encounter, gain an additional clue. Yay, clues. She's got some great observation influence and lore. She is not too strong and has an okay will. Um, but she has quite a bit of sanity and five health. Here is her lore. Ever since she was a child, Mandy would read when she could not sleep. Such has been the case on many nights. Her remarkable memory and ability to correlate facts have made her a highly sought after researcher around the world. Over time, her work has required her to read strange occult texts. These bizarre tomes have slowly caused her to suspect that an ancient being will arise to destroy humanity. Recently, the scrolls she has been reading in Shanghai have made it clear that the world is in immediate danger. So she's in Shanghai, she starts with a magnifying glass, and know thy enemy, unique asset. So her magnifying glass is a trinket. Once per round, you or another investigator on your space may spend one clue to reroll any number of dice when resolving a test. That can be extremely useful, especially in this game. You might roll six dice and not a single one comes up what you need it to be. So getting to reroll all of them is fantastic. Know thy enemy task. Whenever you gain a clue during a research encounter, place one Eldritch token on this card. Then you may flip this card. What that usually means is 
whatever the effect is on the other side, it's probably better if you have more than one token on here. So it says May. So you can do that until you have as much as you want to try to flip it, especially if you're like me and you don't know what's on the other side of that card. All right, let it, let's move on to Monterey Jack. Of course I had to, because he's the archeologist, pretty much Indiana Jones himself. All right, so action. You may discard one artifact to retreat Doom by one, or discard the top card of the Expedition Encounter deck and perform one additional action. So that's interesting, because the Expedition Encounter deck always has a uh, picture on it, and that's where the current Expedition Encounter would be. So you could just discard whatever card is on top of there and take an additional action. So maybe you don't like where it is. Maybe you want it to come closer to you. The last time I played this, I played like a few turns just to refresh myself. The Expedition actually started at the pyramids, and so did a gate. It was insane. Uh, so I could immediately do an Expedition Encounter if I wanted. But anyway, after resolving an expedition encounter, gain one relic unique asset. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So you can move the expedition encounter deck hopefully closer to him, and if you do an expedition encounter, you gain a relic. So you get extra stuff from those encounters. And it, and it does say after resolving, not after successfully resolving. So even if you fail, you still get a relic because, you know, he's the archeologist. He comes away with something no matter what. And here is his lore. Young Jack traveled the world with his father's archaeological expeditions. He acquired the nickname Monterey after a bout of quinine-induced jaundice turned his skin yellow. Once grown, Jack became an accomplished archaeologist in his own right. Now he must explore his own past. His father was found murdered with an arcane sigil carved into the old man's forehead. Here in Cairo, he has seen men wearing this sigil on pendants around their neck. It is time for Jack to start digging. So he starts at the pyramids, which is also Cairo. So he can just move straight to Cairo because it is a local path. He starts with the bullwhip asset and treasure map unique asset. And he's got strength four, observation three, and okay, two influence lore and will. All right, so the treasure map is a trinket. When you gain this card, from the deck, place one random clue face up on this card. After resolving a location encounter or an expedition encounter on this on that space, flip this card. So uh, I drew space 11, which is down here, out in the middle of the ocean. So if I go there and resolve a location encounter or an expedition encounter, if there was one, flip this card. So it's a treasure map, so it must be something awesome on the other side. Hmm options. Also, I do like to keep my clues in a bag because, you know, they say to put it in a clue pool, which is fine because if you just bought this game, that's fine. But keeping the clue pool always mixed and flipped over is a pain uh, after a while. And it's easier to just put them in a bag and draw them out. All right, the bull whip. Dun, 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 dun. Give me the idol, I give you the whip. Item weapon, gain plus one strength during combat encounters. You may reroll one die when resolving a strength test during a combat encounter. Excellent. All right, now we'll look at the assets available in the reserve. We have the 45 Colt Revolver. Once per round, you may gain plus three strength. That's nice and good and straightforward, and it's cheap. The King James Bible. You may reroll one die when resolving a will test during a combat encounter. When you perform a rest action, recover one additional sanity. Ooh. And that's good. Oh, Monterey also has seven health and five sanity. And also, as you may know, the game tells you to put all that health or sanity tokens on or near the card. I like to just leave it blank as full, and when I take damage or lose sanity, I will put the tokens that I have lost on there. So it's the tokens are subtracting from my total. Monster Hunter, an ally. This guy looks nuts. Gain plus two strength during combat encounters. And as an action, a monster of your choice on your space loses one health. All right. Well, that makes sense. He's a monster hunter. He will help you against monsters. And I always like to keep my debt conditions just all sitting on top of the bank loan spot over there. It just makes it so much easier to get to them. And I have most of the decks on screen. I was stoked I could fit it all. But I have my other, I have, my, I have the other conditions right next to me because, uh, I don't know, just made sense. So <laughs> the gate did spawn at the pyramids and a color out of space spawned. And when the color out of space spawns, it goes straight to Tunguska. So thankfully, I did not start the game with a monster on me because I want to go to Cairo and start that adventure. Also, as you may know or not know, 
This is the reference card for number of players, which is to, I, it should say investigators, not players. So it's whenever you spawn a gate, clue, or monster seed, you spawn one. If you have multiple expansions and you have not printed out the FAQ, I highly recommend it. And in the back of that is modified reference cards. And it does say, it's if you're playing Mountains of Madness, Strange Remnants, and Under the Pyramids, use this. It's kind of been changed for the difficulty of those expansions. For two players, it did not change, but all the odd ones basically are different. I take that back, not all the odd ones, but uh, the solo does change. You get two clues instead of only one. There are slight differences depending on the number of players. So also during the setup, I spawned the number of clues on the reference card, which is one. So a clue spawned in Istanbul. And I believe that is everything. Monster Cup is ready to go. Let's see what our first mystery is. The source of filth and disease. Abhoth, the progenitor of miscreation, stirs beneath Mount Formithadreth, spewing forth abominable creatures to spread its filth across the earth. From there it commands its children, those that it does not eat anyway. I think they should have put anyway there. So after investigator resolves a research encounter, he may spend one clue he gained from that encounter and place that clue on this card. Yes, sometimes research encounters don't always give you clues, which is annoying when you're trying to get clues for these, but they'll usually give you something really nice if you don't get a clue. At the end of the mythos phase, if there are clues on this card equal to number of investigators, solve the mystery. Gotta have research encounters and gain the clues. So I'll probably have Mandy try to do that because she's good at observation and lore. So hopefully those are the skills needed in the research encounters. And I will have Monterey Jack go find out what's going on in Cairo. So let's get to it. All right, I'm going to start off with Monterey Jack as my lead investigator. So I'll just throw that over there. Maybe I will just scooch it to this side. But I'm going to take him uh, on along a local path and head over to Cairo where the adventure is. And of course, since that does not require a movement action, I have two actions left. So I'm actually going to take a uh, resource so that when I do my acquire assets action, I am guaranteed at least one success. And I'm not sure exactly what I want. I was thinking the 45 revolver, but you know what? That might be good for Ma Mandy since she has low strength in case she ever does encounter monsters. But uh, let's see what I roll. So I get two. According to my influence value, I got one success. Five and six is our successes. If you're not blessed or cursed, if you're blessed, a four counts. If you're cursed, only sixes. So I have one guaranteed success or two if I spend the resource. Also, you can only ever do each action one time per round. So I can't do two gather resources and get two resources or two focuses and get two focus. Otherwise, I would have done two, and I could have gotten the Monster Hunter. I'm not going to take a deck condition. Those things can just really bite you. Come to think of it, maybe what I should have done was take a focus and a resource, and then just, and that'd be my turn, and then next round take another resource, and then go for the assets. So I think right now, I, you know what, I'll take the Colt 45, because I could trade with Mandy if we're ever on the same space, but also, as the lead investigator, I could get attacked or something, so more strength is good. And my whip is still useful because I can re-roll one die when resolving strength test. All right, so that's Monterey Jack's two action. And uh, let's replace the asset in the reserve. Ritual Candles. You may discard this card to gain plus five lore when resolving a spell effect. Ooh, you may discard this card to gain a spell. Nice. Don't know why but I've never really used spells much in Eldritch Horror. And to be honest, even though it's one of my favorite games, I have all the expansions, you know, I also have a lot of other games and limited game time, so I haven't even played it as much as I'd like to. I haven't even explored all the expansions and ancient ones and investigators. So anyway, one day I'll have to try to go spell strong, but let's just see what happens today. So now it's Mandy's turn. She is in Shanghai. We need clues for the mystery. And she also gets has this Know Thy Enemy, so when she gains a clue during a research encounter, place an Elder Toker on that card. Token. So, 
Thankfully, the spawn clue is two spaces away, so my first action will be to prepare for travel. So I will take a train ticket. Then I will move here and then spend that train ticket to get me to Istanbul along that railroad. That is her two actions. It's time for encounters. So, Monterey is encountering the adventure token. I'll reread this really quick. The talisman of Wajet, an amulet meant to protect the pharaohs in the afterlife, has been stolen. The police suspect a man named Eric Weiss, but your gut tells you he is innocent. All right, so I can attempt to convince the police that Eric has been framed. Influence check. This would have been a good time to have the focus. See, I should have done that other thing. Come on, success. Because focus lets you re-roll. I failed, and that's the turn. On to Mandy. So she is going to have a research encounter with that clue. She is in a city space. Old tunnels have been discovered beneath the city after a missing persons investigation. You venture into the dark to see what you can find. That's always a good idea. Observation minus one for her is still three. That is good. Success, I got a five. If you pass, you find piles of odds and ends covered in gray ooze. Gain this clue and one random item asset from the deck. Hoo-hoo! All right, so the first item I drew is a cult tablet. Gain plus three lore when resolving spell effects. When you perform a rest action, you may test lore. If you pass, you may spend one sanity to gain one clue. <laughs> That's cool. Of course, those clues can't be put on the mystery because those must be gained during a research encounter. But that is still an awesome little card there. Now I gain that clue and I will put it on active mystery of course we need two there and of course wow yes so mandy's passive ability is after resolving a research encounter if you gain exactly one clue from that encounter gain one additional clue i am guessing this is not from that encounter therefore i cannot put it on the mystery but i will check that in one second so i gain another clue and also whenever i gain a clue during a research encounter place an elder token on this card and then you may flip it i will not flip it yet i'll get at least two on there yeah, I'm not even going to look it up because the words wording says after an investigator resolves a research encounter, let me spend one clue from that encounter, place that clue on this card. So the encounter was over, then my passive ability says after resolving. So you have resolved it. It's not, it doesn't say add one or whatever, but after resolving, if you gain exactly one, gain an additional one. So I may spend the one I gained on the mystery. After I've gained one from the encounter, I gain an extra one. So that's pretty much how that works. So actually, silly me, yes, I was correct, but they also put it in the FAQ of the Under the Pyramids and says, is the additional clue gained with Mandy Thompson's passive ability gained from the research encounter? No, after resolving a research encounter, Mandy's passive ability could allow her to gain an additional clue. However, it's, it's gained from her ability, not the encounter. So, yep. Everything in this game is very specifically worded and you've already got to kind of pay attention sometimes, spend a moment to parse it out and figure it out. But I got it right. All right, so we are now one step closer to solving the mystery. Let's move on to the mythos phase. All right, so we spawn a clue and it goes on space five, which is way over there in the middle of the... Canada? <laughs> Jeez. Either Northern States or Southern Canada. And then we put a rumor token on space six, which is way over here. This is good. So these symbols mean that the, uh, the Mythos card is not that bad. That's how you can stack your deck. If you want an easy game, you can stack it with all of these or a mixture of those and normal ones. Ones with the tent, ones with nothing are just about normal and ones with the tentacles are bad. A wax doll sits on the table next to your bed. Crude strips of fabric make it clear that the doll represents you, and a lock of your own hair is tied around the figure. Yay! Voodoo curse. How is that not bad? Okay. Probably because maybe it takes a while. Okay, ongoing rumor. As an encounter, an investigator on Space 6 may attempt to undo the magic which binds him to the voodoo doll. 
He may spend clues equal to half the number of investigators to solve this rumor. Ah, the reckoning. An investigator that does not have a bane condition gains one bane condition. Ugh. Yes, as you know, banes are not good. Boons are good, banes are bad. So, every reckoning until I get rid of that rumor is gonna not be good. Okay, so that's cool though. It spawned right by that clue. So, I could have her try to get over there and take care of both things, which is what I will probably do. That ends the mythos phase, and so we're on to the next round. Yay! Okay, so as Monterey Jack, I am going to take a focus and another resource. That's my two actions. And then Mandy, I'm going to use her special ability to draw two clues from the clue pool, spawn one of them, and discard the other. So this allows me to take my pick of one that I might like closer to me. 17 or 8? 17 is one space away. That's really good. 8 is over under Arkham. <laughs> That puts two over in that area. Makes it really useful to head that direction. But you know what? So that last round was pretty tame for Elder Horror. So I'm going to put it on space 17. Because if I can solve this first mystery on this round, then we're already one third of the way there. So that's one action for her. Second action, I will move to space 17. Now we go on to encounters. So Monterey Jack is doing the museum heist again. So testing influence. No success, I'm gonna spend that focus. Oop. Doesn't count. Yes, got it. So I gained the Eric Weiss unique asset. Here he is. He's an ally. Roll one additional die when resolving lore or observation. You cannot become delayed or gain a detained condition unless you choose to. Hey, hey, hey. That is pretty good. Put Eric right there. Now, the police release Eric into your custody under the condition that, he app that you apprehend the thief. Complete this adventure. So when it's completed, you gain Eric Weiss and draw a random museum heist too. So, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Discard that one. A lead at Tel El Amarna, museum heist too. You suspect that after the heist, the thief took refuge in the ruins of the ancient city of Akaten, uh, Akataten. The city is home to many wonders, but you hope to find the thief as well. When this card enters play, place an adventure token on Tel El Amarna. After an investigator resolves a location encounter on Tel El Amarna, the investigation leads to the discovery of the thief's hideout. Unfortunately, the thief manages to escape and flee down the river, leaving behind some of his haul. Complete this adventure. Alright, so I gotta go to a Tel El Amarna and have a location encounter there. So we move this over here, which is connected via local path. So we'll be able to get there no problem. Now we move on to Mandy. She's going to have a research encounter. And she's on a city space. Arkham's deputy Dingby appears to be visiting the city. You try to blend in and pray he does not recognize you. Observation minus one again, which is still three. No success. I will spend her clue to reroll one die. Nope. Alrighty, let's see what happens. If you fail, his face lights up when he sees you and exclaims, My friend! Together, nothing will escape our expertly trained eyes. Impair observation. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> so I now have a, an impairment my observation. So much for going straight to the closest clue and getting nothing. Now it's time for Mythos. Alright, so 
the omen track will move, I will have a reckoning, and then spawn a gate. So it moves to blue, when the omen track moves to blue, or when the omen track moves, any matching gates will spawn a monster. So the omen moved to blue, and whenever the omen moves, any matching gates cause the doom to go down. So, I have one blue gate, doom is now at 13. Alright, so now I do the Reckoning, and so you resolve Reckonings in order of Monsters, Ancient One, Mythos, Cards, Possessions, and Conditions. So, uh, I have one monster on the board, it does not have a Reckoning. So I do the Ancient One, and of course, once again, that is... The Lead Investigator spawns one Cultist Monster on a Wilderness Space that does not contain a Cultist Monster. If there are six or more, Advanced Doom. Alright, so... Basically... Seems to leave that up to my choice. I think I will put this cultist way out where hopefully we don't care. <laughs> and now Mythos cards, so... Oh, where did I put that? Oh, here's the Mythos card. Oh, an investigator that does not have a Bane condition gains a Bane condition. So... It's weird that it says Anne. <laughs> You'd think it should would say all investigators that do not have one. I'm assuming that's what it means. I'm gonna put this here, so... Remember. All right, well, <clears throat> I had sorted all my conditions alphabetically and I forgot that sometimes you gotta randomly draw a certain type. So I used a app, a Eldritch Helper app on the computer and uh, my Bane condition were, was <laughs> for both of them was cursed. I really wish they would have clarified the wording on this reckoning because it says an investigator. If I'm not mistaken, that's singular. So, should have said every or all investigators that do not have a bane condition. Part of me wonders if you're supposed to just pick one. You know, somebody in the group has to take it. But I will just go for it. I did look it up, couldn't find anything about that. So, two cursed conditions, here they go. This is gonna make the game much harder, which is, okay, so it was, like I said, that first round <laughs> was not too bad. It's already getting bad, so. Only sixes now count as successes. If you would gain another curse condition, flip this card instead. If you would gain a blessed condition, discard this card. So, on the next reckoning, I can roll one die on a four, five, or six, I can discard this card, so. <sighs> that's a bummer. And now I spawn a gate. Let's see what fun befalls, I mean, happens in now. <laughs> Cairo, where I'm currently standing. And as you know, whenever you spawn a gate, you spawn a monster. What did I get? Ooh, a cultist, not too bad. All right, well, I guess. <laughs> so, gate and cultist. Might be fun to see what fighting the cultist does. <laughs> Because, uh, I don't know. You never know. Something awesome could happen or something terrible could happen. That's what makes this game fun. But let's move on. Fear has driven you to cling to anything that might keep you safe, and now those things are the very weapons your enemies will use against you. Weight of Avarice. Each investigator discards half of his item possessions, then he loses one health for each item possession he has. Why do I like this game? <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go. Well, for uh, Monterey, I have two items. I'm going to get rid of the Bullwhip, because even though it can reroll a die one per round, it's only plus one strength. I'll keep the plus three strength of the Colt 45. That's annoying. And then I lose a health for each item I still have. Now I'm at six health. Mandy has one item. I suppose I can't discard half of an item, so she probably just loses one health. <laughs> so, just kidding, rounding. If an effect references half of a number, round up to determine the final number. Nope, Mandy loses her occult tablet that I didn't even get to use when I perform a rest. You may test lower if you pass, spend a sanity to gain a clue. Eh, it's all right. Not, that was that free one I got. So, 
No big loss. And now I don't lose a health, which is good because she's got lower health. Then Monterey. Okay, Mythos done. On to the next round. So Monterey is going to move to tell El Armana via the local paths. That is not an action. So I will take a focus again. I suppose I will go ahead and rest and heal myself. And now it's Mandy's turn. So Mandy is at that clue that we want. She definitely needs a focus. Oops, I just realized uh, when I was re-rolling with my clue last time, I could have used my magnifying glass and re-rolled all my dice. Oh well, which really sucks because I've been cursed since then, but uh, that's what I get for forgetting. I'm gonna do prepare, I'm gonna gain a train, because if I am gonna go over there to try to solve that rumor, I need to get there faster. Okay, so there we go. Got a train ticket and a focus token. Put that there. That's it for actions on to encounter. So Monterey will have a Tell El Amarna location encounter. A feluca rests on the riverbank. Inside, you find strange symbols carved into the wood. Lore test. It's two. Nope, gosh, I need a six. Oh, this is terrible. One more time. Oh, roll one additional die when resolving lore or, or, will, or observation test. So, this will be that additional die before I spend that focus. Oh, yes! I get the focus back. That was awesome. <sighs> All right. If you pass, you read the journey of a madman as he travels up the river gain one clue, and spawn one clue on the Nile River. Woo boy, okay, that's cool. So I gain a clue, I should put this here. I don't know why, put those there, put that there. Um, and spawn a clue on the Nile. Very interesting, very, very interesting, especially because Mandy is on space 17. If she gets that clue, she can come over to Cairo or she can go to the heart of Africa and get straight to the Nile River or go to Cairo and then come around local path to Tel El Amarna, then ship to the Nile. Well, whatever. I think she probably really needs to get over to that rumor. Wait a minute. Now, I was trying to see if she could do any of the local paths through Egypt to get to the U.S. any faster. But no, it's it's this is how it is. <laughs> OK, let's read. which leads to the discovery of the thief's hideout. Unfortunately, the thief managed to escape and flee down the river, leaving behind some of his haul. Complete this adventure. When this adventure is completed, the activator gains one relic unique asset, then draw the chase on the river adventure. Ah, okay. So step three is either chase on the river or chase on the desert, I guess, depending on what step two you got. Okay, so I will be gaining a relic unique asset and then then switching to the chase on the river. All right. Oh, and let's see, the chase on the river. The Nile River is the center of life and commerce in the Nile Valley and throughout all of Egypt. The thief is headed up river and you race to cut him off before he reaches the jungle. When this card enters play, place an adventure token on the Nile River. Oh, so he's got to go there anyway where that token, where the clue is. When I complete this, oh, so then after NFSK resolves a location counter on the Nile River, he may attempt to track the museum thief along the river valley. And that's observation minus one, which I have is three, so that'll be a two, not too bad. Okay, all right, so I gotta go to the Nile River. I gotta gain my unique asset. Hold on. All right, the first item at the bottom of the deck was a relic, uh, or the first unique asset at the bottom of the deck. So, and you draw from bottom of the decks for randomness uh, for the double-sided decks because they have stuff on the front that you can see you're not allowed to like know what you're gonna draw if you decide to draw something anyway when you perform a rest action you may attempt to decipher the carvings on the tablet lore minus one if you pass flip this card hmm, interesting doesn't seem to have any negative effect <laughs> yeah I shouldn't say things like that not in this game okay uh, so got that we'll move the token to the Nile all right so on to Mandy's turn. And she is having an encounter, a research encounter. Let's not forget about the magnifying glass this time. City space. 
At the library, you check out several volumes that contain maps of the local area and compare them to your notes. Observation, which is three since I only, since I am impaired. Oops. Oh, that was, oh, <laughs> it was a six that rolled out, but I rolled a six in. So that's good. Success. If you pass, you realize that several of the caves in the area were formed within the last few months. Gain this clue. Hooray! All right, so we're gonna gain the clue to solve the mystery. But that doesn't happen until after the mythos phase. Now, when I gain a clue during a research encounter, I can put an Eldritch token here, and then I may flip this card, which I'm going to do. Know thy enemy. Ha ha ha. Oh, cool. All of the research you have done until now has led up to this singular truth about the Ancient One. With this realization, you have a new weapon with which to fight. Resolve the effect based on the number of Elders tokens on this card. One to two, gain two clues. That's fantastic. I could have retreated Doom, but I'm already... I'm, at this point in the game, Doom is fine. I shouldn't say that. It's probably going to retreat by five now. Or five plus. Oh, <laughs> advance the active mystery by two. Although... That wouldn't have helped because I just solved the mystery. So thank goodness. That would have been great though, later. That's pretty awesome. So anyway, I get to gain two clues. Uh, discard this card. When you discard double-sided cards, they go back in the deck and you shuffle them. Okay. So that ends encounters onto the mythos. Okay, we're gonna advance Doom again, have another Reckoning and another gate. So Doom goes to red, this gate is green. So nothing happens, I mean, Omen goes to red. No gates match it, so Doom does not advance. Now we have another Reckoning. So the Cultist has a Reckoning, but I believe that only happens uh, if you see a Reckoning on the Ancient Ones sheet. Yeah, it says it right there on the back. After monsters, we go to Ancient Ones. So the lead investigator spawns one cultist monster in a wilderness space that does not contain one. If there are six, advance Doom. Oh, there are not six. There are going to be three. I'll put this dude way down here. Okay. Mythos cards, that whole Bane thing. I've already got Banes, so nothing happens. Possessions and conditions. All right, so our Bane conditions will we'll do. So roll one die on a four, five, or six. Discard this card. Yay. Monterey gets rid of his curse condition. Now for Mandy. Nope. So since Reckonings do not count as tests, I cannot reroll that. So she still has her Bane condition. And we spawn a gate. That's it for the Reckoning. Gate is in Sydney. And it spawns a monster. It is a dole, which looks like a giant leech thing. Okay, so it has a reckoning effect. Yay, but doesn't happen right now. Oh, well, this is good fun. You'll see. This dark intelligence somehow embedded its maliciousness in its own stories. Little by little, these stories have crept into your mind, poisoning you, poisoning you. Curse of knowledge, event. Each investigator discards half of his clues, then the lead investigator gains a curse condition. That's right, folks. That curse condition I just got rid of. <laughs> oh, I love this game. I don't know why. Okay, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and half clues, round it up. Just one. Goodbye, clue. Did I, did I just gain that? I forget. I don't know. Yep. Well, anyway, that's the end of the mythos. Thank goodness. <sighs> so now, go back here. And at the end of the mythos phase, if there are clues on this card equal to investigators, solve this mystery. There were, they're gone. Next mystery. Exploring the caverns. The caverns twist and turn into the depths. Gray ooze dripping down the rocky walls. Screams of those taken by the children echo endlessly through the dark tunnels, but there is no help to be had. When this card enters play, place one Eldritch token on each of the following wilderness spaces. 
4, 10, 19, and 21. Ha <laughs> ha! That's why the cultists go in the wilderness in the spaces. Okay, we have 4, 10, 19, and 21. So as an encounter, an investigator on a space containing an Eldritch token may spend one clue to explore the caverns beneath the Earth's surface. If he spends the clue, he draws and resolves a deep cavern special encounter. At the end of the Mythos phase, if there are Eldritch tokens on this card, equal to half the number of investigators solve this mystery. Okay, so it sounds like I only need to do that successfully or something, I don't know, once. We shall see, shall we? Shant, shant, shant. Okay. That finally ends the round. On to the next one. So this is definitely a situation where a third investigator would help because of that stinking rumor over there. However, I guess while I already have Banes, it doesn't quite matter that much. <laughs> but I think Mandy is going to head up to Space 19 and do that encounter to uh, try to solve this mystery while Monterey continues to go for the adventure. All right, so let's do it. Monterey is going to go to the Nile River as one action. And then he's going to focus as another action, because I could use any amount of rerolls I can get right now with that cursed condition. All right. Mandy, wonderfully, already has a train ticket. The way you do use tickets is you do your travel action first, then you can spend a ticket of the type of the path you want to take and go further. So if you have two tickets of what you need, you can have up to two tickets. You can actually get three locations in one travel step. But she just needs to go to here. So she could try to solve the mystery. I suppose she will also gain a focus. All right, let's do encounters. So after an investigator resolves a location on the Nile, you may attempt to track the museum thief along the river and test observation minus one. So I've got to do the Nile River first. The river runs red with blood, and fire rains down from the skies. The dark pharaoh has brought the ancient plagues to fill you with dread. Will plus one. That's interesting. So I get three. Yes! By the way, when I do these videos, I have such wonderful rolls. It makes for very successful videos for you. However, whenever I play a game that involves dice with people, it doesn't go so well. Let's just say that. Okay, so I think the only thing was, so if I fail, I, eesh, come on, focus. Uh, something, but no success. So basically just nothing bad happens. Those are, honestly, if you play this game enough, nothing happening is fine. <laughs> I mean, you saw how some things have already happened in this game. Okay. So now I can test observation minus one, which is a two, to attempt to track the museum thief. Oh, fives. I wish I had something that could just bump it by one. Oh, I forgot, I get an extra die with Eric Weiss when resolving a observation test. That's a terrible roll. All right, so we will spend a focus. Another one. Let's put that aside. And we'll spend another focus. We gotta get this. We gotta get this. Yes! Holy moly! I swear to God, I'm not like rolling and rolling and rolling and editing. Oh my gosh. Fantastic. I told you. When it's, if it's just me, <laughs> I'm amazing. If you, if you pass, catch the thief and reclaim the stolen exhibits. Complete this adventure. When this adventure is completed, the active investigator gains one artifact then draw the proof of innocence adventure. Okay. So we'll put that aside for a second. We'll get the, get one artifact. So right off the top of the deck, a gate box, a magical item. Investigators on your space roll one additional die when resolving tests during other world encounters. If you choose, close a gate during another world encounter, gain a clue. Huh. That's cool, that's cool. But, so, I don't know, 
Currently, I'm not going to go close gates, but you never know, and that, now that I said that, there's a likelihood I'll need to for some reason. But anyway, I can also discard an artifact to retreat Doom by one if I need to, so I'll just hold on to that. All right, proof of innocence. The thief apprehended. All that remains now is to bring him to the police in Cairo and return the talisman to the museum. That done, Eric's name will be in the clear. So when this card enters play, place an adventure token on Cairo. After Investigator resolves a location encounter on Cairo, which I will have to encounter that cultist first, he may turn over the museum thief to the authorities and prove Eric's innocence. If he has the Eric Wise unique asset, complete this adventure. Well, I guess I guess that's just all that happens. You completed the adventure. Good job. So, um, I move this back to Cairo. So now, to get back to Cairo, I can either move here, it's gonna require a move. So I can go to the heart of Africa, then, then move as a local path, then move to the pyramids and then local path to Cairo, or I can just sh ship path, move, and then local path to Cairo. So either way, I need to spend a travel action to get there. Okay, on to Mandy's turn. Oh gosh, she needs a clue to do that thing. Whoops, <laughs> made an enormous mistake. All right, I forgot that little tidbit. As an encounter investigator in Space Canyon Elder Token may spend one clue to explore the caverns. So do the deep cavern special encounter and then when Elder Tokens are on here. So she needs a clue first. Okay, so I would not have moved there had I remembered that. So this time I'm gonna backtrack. Okay, so. Backtracking, she is back on Space 17 with a railroad ticket. And I think what I'm going to do... Okay, my first idea was to use the local path travel to, from Space 17 to Cairo. Uh, or sorry, take a, take a ship ticket. Local path to Space 17. Move to Cairo, local path to Tel Al Amarna and spend the ship ticket to get to Nile River. However, you can only do local path movement once during the round. So it's the one time to Space 17 and then, or to, to Space 17, and then I gotta move along the ship path to Cairo. So that won't work, because that will be using that twice. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take another railroad token. I'm gonna be spending them both because I'm headed to London. Multiple reasons now. Okay, so move one, spend one. Oh, I need to, sorry, it needed to be a ship token, not a railroad token. Spend a ship token, get to London. So I'm gonna encounter London, which can spawn clue tokens, which is great, we need clue tokens. Also, I'm now almost headed over here where I can try to get rid of that rumor. And there's another clue, and there's an Eldritch token to do the the thing with the active mystery. So that's her turn. Oh, that's what her turn would have been. I forgot, I'm backtracking. Okay, so she's now in London and she's going to have a London encounter. Professor Patterson died before completing his life's work. His spirit now torments his brother, Maurice. His brother will pay for your travel if you take on this burden. You may gain a haunted condition to gain two task unique assets then discard one of them and gain a ship ticket. Huh. I'm not gonna need a ship ticket to get to the rumor. So this is basically, I can make a choice which is gonna give me a haunted condition. And get two task unique assets. Well, tasks, like, didn't I have one? Well, you know what, yeah. Uh, I don't really know what that task is gonna be, if it's really gonna help out. And I don't want a haunted condition. I've, I'm already cursed, and I don't need the ship ticket. <laughs> uh, so it didn't spawn clues like I wanted it to. Uh, hold on. Yeah, I just want to get over there, get rid of that rumor, do the Elders token thing. I, I just need to stick to the plan, man. Okay, so that's end of encounters. Time for Mythos. Okay, Doom advances. We have a monster surge, and we spawn a clue. I meant the omen moves. So, blue, we have one blue, one green, and one red. So, Doom advances one. We have a monster surge of one. So the monster surge happens where the omen is. So we're gonna have a monster spawn at the pyramids. Okay. 
<laughs> wow, I got another cultist, which is not good because it's ramping up the number of cultists, which is going to end up retreating doom or advancing doom, advancing doom, uh, eventually. So, yes, the cultist goes on the pyramids. <laughs> now we spawn a clue, and it goes to the heart of Africa. Alrighty. You see now you have asked too many questions. As you have studied, you have been studied. As you have studied, you have been studied. And now dark forces will punish you for your curiosity. Unknown dangers. Investigators as a group lose a total amount of health and or sanity equal to the number of clues on the game board. Ugh. As a group. Okay. One... <clears throat> One, two, three. There's only three. So we're definitely going to have Monterey lose one health. And she's going to lose one sanity. Which one needs to lose one more of something? I'm going to take another health on Monterey Jack because he has this where when I rest, I may attempt to decipher the carvings on this tablet. So I'll. Definitely be resting with him first, if I might skip resting with her. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I should make that sanity, because when you rest, you can recover one health and one sanity. Oh, but he has... That's right. He has resources, so he can get rid of both healths. No problem. Okay, so that's the end of the mythos. On to action phase. All right, so Jack needs to... Move to Tel Al Amarna along the ship path and then take a local path to Cairo in order to finish the adventure. Of course, I can't rest because there's a monster on my space. So I guess, okay, so I will rest first, then I will travel. Oh, but I want to focus. Well, let's just, yep, yeah, let's just go for it. Uh, I will take a focus. And now, hmm, huh, predicament with Mandy. She needs a rail ticket, but she there's no railroad connected to London. So, I guess I will move to Arkham. And you know what? It says there I can gain spells, so maybe I should try out some spells. <clears throat> so I'm moving to Arkham. Oof, boy, this is taking longer than I wanted. But she, gosh, she needs a clue for the Eldritch thing, the rumors there. I'm going to get rid of that rumor, because if I do get rid of these cursed conditions, they're just going to come back, or some other bane. Okay, so I have moved. She already has two focus. Uh, I guess probably rest. Actually, I'm going to go for those ritual candles, because if I do get a spell, that adds plus five lore to any spell effect, and why not? Okay, so... Influence is three. Oh gosh, I do need sixes. Ha! Huh. Oh well. Let's have some fun. Nope! Two fives. But not a single six, which I needed. If I had had a resource, I could have added a success. And I know this is silly. People are going to say, why would you do that? I'm going to take a debt. <laughs> which uh, gives me... Uh, two successes. So unfortunately, I only need one. So I will take the ritual candles and my debt condition. So now I replace esteemed author, an ally. You may reroll one die when resolving an influence test. When you gain this card from the deck or reserve, gain one random tome asset from the deck. Well, you know what? I'm silly. Uh, before I take that debt, I'm going to spend one of these focus at least to reroll one of these. Let's try, let's try. Nope, another five. Uh, I'm going to keep the other focus in case I need it for the next encounter. Okay, that's action, so let's go to encounters. So you have to fight each monster on your face. On your face. <laughs> on your space. This monster, this game does have monsters on your face sometimes. Um, okay, so when I encounter a cultist monster, I draw and resolve a spawn of Abhoth. Special encounter. That is this pile. Okay. Gelatinous tendrils rise from the core of the twisted abomination. 
Oozing filth and shedding skin and bone into misshapen piles, offending every one of your senses, you summon the courage to attack before you are within range of its grasping limbs. Will minus one. Which is one. But I can... Oh, that's not will. That's lore or observation. So, oh my gosh. I get one <laughs> One die and I need a six. Here we go. No, four. Okay, I will reroll that. Five. Ah, man, I would be rolling successes if I weren't cursed. Well, not good. Now I go to the bottom. Unnerved, you find yourself surrounded by the sneaking tendrils. The beast opens its maw, and you lash out in desperation. Strength test. Which is four. Does this count as a combat encounter? Huh. Let me think. So, uh, so the FAQ in the under the pyramids, spawn of Abahoth special encounters are considered combat encounters. And if you defeat every monster, you can have another encounter. Pretty much knew that part, but it is a combat encounter, so I can use my Colt 45 to add three to my dice pool. All right, so rolling seven dice. Phew! One, two, three successes. Finally, all those bad rolls. But let's see what happens here. If you pass, this monster loses two health. Alrighty. The monsters have three health. So it ain't dead yet. I wish there was a way to bash its face or something. But there isn't. Its toughness is three, so it needs one more hit. To be gotten rid of. Oh my gosh. If I had succeeded on the first part, I don't always read these, but hey, I don't know. When am I going to get this exact card again? If I had succeeded, the monster would have lost health equal to my strength. It would have just immediately killed it. But alas, I must uh, encounter it again. I cannot finish the adventure because there's a monster still on my space. So we go to Mandy in Arkham. You are suddenly confronted on Meadow Hill by an unnameable presence. The sight of the creature horrifies you beyond description. Will test. Which is two. Oh, bye bye all dice. It's so fun to roll that many dice. <laughs> Not even close. Try again. <laughs> oh, I need to get rid of those cursed conditions. Okay, if you fail, you awake some time later with with strange bruises, lose one sanity, and gain a back injury condition. Lovely. Alright, back injury condition. When you perform a rest action, you may roll one die. On a five or six, discard this card. Alright. And on the reckoning, test strength, and if you fail, flip this card. So, uh, so I definitely need to rest soon. Get rid of... Oof. Hopefully she'll have a resource too, but we'll see. That's the end of Encounters. Time for Mythos. All right, Omen Track, Monster Surge, and Clue. So the Omen Track goes to green. There is one green gate. So the Doom retreats. It's only down to 11. I should not say things like only, because then the game will go, oh really? Only? We'll show you. We have a Monster Surge on the green gate. Let me draw one out of here. Let's see, what is it? Ooh. A poltergeist! Ooh. So the green thing here means something happens. When this monster is spawned, the lead investigator gains one bane condition. Yay, another bane condition. Okay. So... <laughs> now there's, uh, there's two monsters here now. Uh, when it's defeated, I can gain a boon condition. Which, yes, okay. So that's cool. Um, to defeat it, I do will minus one for horror, and it's a three, so I could lose some sanity. A, will, a strength minus one test, and it's a toughness of three. This spot just got a lot harder. Mm hmm Okay. 
Well, that's the monster surge. Now we spawn a clue. It goes to the Sahara Desert. There we go. Now we continue. Oh, good. We got the light thingy, so hopefully this is a good thing. Every day, new discoveries are being made in the sands of Egypt. Universities around the world are constantly publishing new insights into the ancient world. Archaeological breakthroughs. After resolving a research encounter, if an investigator gained exactly one clue from that encounter, he gains one additional clue. Oh, okay. Each investigator may spend one clue to improve one skill of his choice. Huh, that's on the reckoning. Interesting. So this is just an ongoing mythos effect that doesn't go on any specific place. After resolving research encounter, get an additional clue. And each investigator may spend a clue to improve a skill. That's pretty cool. I will put that here next to the mythos deck for the ongoing. I've just been putting my discards off screen. All right, that's the end of mythos. On to actions. But now that Monterey Jack is has lots of monsters with toughness three. Uh, and I'm cursed. What should I do? What should I do? Well, <laughs> let's see. Oh. I think I missed this part. When the adventure is completed, advance the act of mystery by two. Gosh, so doing that really, really help the game. Okay. So I do roll seven dice in a combat encounter. But I am cursed. The cursed part really sucks. Oh man, but last time I got three, you never know. I guess I'm just gonna go for it because if Mandy's gonna be trying to get rid of that other rumor, we st she's not gonna have any clues yet to, to solve the current mystery. So if he can make it through these monsters, then we can solve the mystery. All right, so I'm gonna stay right there. I'm gonna gain a focus and can't rest because there's monsters. Or acquire assets because there's monsters. I can prepare for travel. I guess you can buy travel tickets while you're running from monsters. Mm. Oh, I only gain the plus three once per round with the revolver. So let me think. Okay, so I'm actually going to. So I took a focus. I'll keep that, I think. I'm actually going to move local path to, you know what? The bent pyramid where it says I can gain artifacts. Maybe an artifact will help me. Fight these monsters. Oh wait, yes, that's a local path, so it's not an action. And now I can rest. So I recover one health, spend a resource, recover my other health. And then when you perform a rest action, you may attempt to decipher the carvings on this stone tablet. Lore minus one, which is one. Hey, who knows? Oh, come back. Oh, <laughs> it was a six, but I never count them if they roll out. Ah, four. I think I'm gonna keep my focus so that if I, yeah, if I need it for the thing. Oh well, gave it a try. I am now for full health again. Now it's Mandy's turn. She is going to, for sure, move to here. What am I gonna need to do again? As an encounter, an investigator in space six may attempt to undo the magic which binds him to the voodoo doll. He may spend clues. <laughs> <sighs> I keep forgetting some of the details of these things. Oopsies. So she needs clues for that too. Uh, just kidding now. So she needs clues for both the rumor and the mystery. All right, so, okay. She is just going to go to this clue because when she gains one, she gains another. So she'll have another clue to go to try to solve the mystery. So she's moved. I suppose she will focus. If you only have the core set of this game, focus was introduced, I think, in the Mountains of Madness. So I do highly recommend playing with focus. Just use some other, uh, you know, stand-in token or something. Just play with that. It definitely helps. Sometimes things can be too hard and you're spending clues to reroll stuff, but you need the clues for other things. So focus was really a uh, very essential addition to the game. So she moved and focused. On to encounters. So, Monterey is doing the Bent Pyramid. Sniferu's funerary chamber appears empty. That's probably, <laughs> sounds kind of silly. It's probably like, Sniferu's funerary chamber appears empty, but you search the area. Observation minus one. Uh. 
Nope. Focus. Nope. We got the extra die. The observation test. Keep forgetting. Ah. Okay. Well, that was fun. Where am I? Bent pyramid. If you fail, you are suddenly aware that this room no longer has an exit, and you must dig to freedom. Gain a back injury condition. Woohoo! Back injuries all around. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, so he's got a back injury now. That's the end of Monterey's turn. Time for Mandy's turn. She is going to have a research encounter for the clue. The dig crew was puzzled by the odd variety of bones they recovered. You helped them piece the bones together. Observation minus one. It's already minus one, so it's three. Now it's only two. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Come on. Nope. Aye, aye, aye. If you fail, you hit them together incorrectly and are none the wiser. Discard this clue. Well, so much for that clue. Thank you, Elder Tor. <laughs> clues because if I don't I don't have a clue okay um encounters are over we go to mythos omen monster surge and clue once again so the omen goes to blue There's still one blue gate doom goes to 10 monster surge on the pyramids Got a laying spider. Yummy. <laughs> Interesting. If you fail the will test, do not resolve the strength test. And you do not resolve any other encounters this round. Oi. So if you fight it, him and don't pass the will test, you need a two success. You do not even go on to fight it. It just scares you so badly. You can't fight. You don't even have an encounter. Well. Well, I guess somebody else could try to kill it, but you, that investigator, won't have any encounters. Okay, spawn a clue. Goes to the Nile River. There are now two clues on the Nile River. Okie dokie. Whatever. <laughs> there we go. You notice swollen red bite marks on your skin, apparently the result of some insect or spider. You cannot recall where or when the bite occurred. Food for worms. Ew, this is tentacles. When this card enters play, each investigator gains one illness condition. On the reckoning, each investigator loses three health for each illness condition he has. Then discard this card. Oh my gosh. Well, at least the back injury is not an illness condition, it's an injury. So I need to take an illness condition. Both of us. This is another ongoing. Put that there. All right, so the app said we both are poisoned. Oops, wrong side. But you'll see, yes, see, different things happen on the other side, but I'm not gonna read them. And they were blurry, so you can't read them. Come on, focus. So a poison condition is an illness when you perform a rest action, you cannot recover health nor sanity, and then you flip the card. And on a reckoning, lose one health. So I guess you have to rest. You'll flip it. Something will happen. It'll go away. I guess you heal at that point. Uh, so many conditions. I'll put this here. And that there. Alrighty. That finishes the mythos. And on to actions. Alright, since we need clues for, like, everything. Uh, Monterey Jack going to head over local path and then travel to the Nile and then obviously focus because I need rerolls. Mandy's going to use her her action to draw two clues. Spawn one. So we got Buenos Aires and space seven. Space seven is close by, closer than Buenos Aires. I'm going to put that on space seven. The other one's discarded. So that was one action. To get to, get to Space 7, I'm going to need two moves. Oh, no, if I go to San Francisco, I only need one move to get to Space 7. Okay, so she's going to go to San Francisco, where she might improve observation, which would get rid of that impairment, which would help. So there we go. 
All right, on to encounters. So Monterey Jack is going to have a research encounter. Okay. Uh, he's on a wilderness space, the Nile River. You attempt to map the extensive subterranean cave system, hoping to discern which direction it leads and what it might pass beneath. Observation. This time I'm going to remember Eric and give him a plus one to four. Yeah. No success yet. Nope. Spend the focus. Gah. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you fail, you take a wrong turn and become separated from your companions, never to see them again. Discard one ally asset. Oh. Huh. Really? <laughs> oh, this was a terrible decision. You know what? And you know, the Bane, the Cursed. Um, oh, it's only on Reckonings that you can get rid of it. So never mind. I couldn't have chosen to try to get rid of it. So there goes Eric Weiss. So there goes all hope of the adventure because you need to have Eric Weiss. So he is discarded. It does say never to see them again, but it doesn't say remove from the box. So it is possible to get him again. So I'm going to put him in the unique asset deck. So if I draw a random ally, I could get him. Or if I can choose something, Ugh, that would be really lucky. Darn it. I'm losing these cards. But you never know. Okay. So that stunk. All right. That's the end of that. No clues. I lost Eric Weiss. It is now Mandy's turn in San Francisco. Philo Farnsworth sends you instructive visions through a network of dreamers. Gain a talent condition. Huh. The, green, the dreams grow sinister. Will minus one. Which is one. <laughs> if you fail, you stop sleeping. Impair one skill of your choice. Well, since strength is already one, I'm going to impair strength. I'm pretty sure you can do that. But that just means that if I were ever to improve strength, I just get rid of the impairment token. So if something, you know, an effect said improve your strength skill, it would just, that would just go away. Oh no, wait. I think you can't impair less than one if you choose to. My bad. Yep, right here, plain as day. An investigator cannot choose to impair skill of doing so would take a blow one. Well, I guess I'll do influence. We also cannot impair a skill more than twice. That's why on the other side of the token is a two. Okay, so <laughs> that's the end of the trip to San Francisco. I really need to get rid of that rumor and our bane condition, our cursed conditions. Otherwise, they might just come back because of that rumor, but I need clues. I can't seem to get them. All right, on to Mythos. Omen, Reckoning, and Gate. Omen first goes to red. Red is over there. Doom goes down one. And I need a monster. Nope, I don't need a monster. Now, now I have Reckonings. Monsters go first. There's no Reckoning for Cultists. But I have one thing there. I think that's the only one that has it. So, move this monster one space toward the nearest investigator. Then each investigator on this space or an adjacent space loses one health and one sanity. So this is in Sydney. Sydney can go to. Let's see. Space seventeen is in Cairo, which is technically the pyramids. That's like one, two, three spaces away from there. One, two, three. Yep, I think it's closest to Jack. So it's going to go from Sydney 
or one, or one, two, three. Ooh, four. Nope, okay, so closer. Sydney to space 20. Now you have the reckoning on the ancient one. So I'm gonna spawn a cultist. How many are out there? I think there's five. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's only four. All right, so the next one, if there are six or more, advance do that one. So this has to go in a wilderness space. It doesn't already have a cultist. I will throw it all the way out there. Okay. Now, Mythos Reckonings. Okay, so the Mythos Reckonings are this one, gain a boon if you, bane if you don't already have one. We both have banes. This one is each investigator loses three health for each illness. We each have a single illness. Then discard the card. Oh, thank goodness. At least that's gone. We each need to lose three health. So Jack is now at four. Mandy is now at two. Mm, she's not looking too good. And then the last one, you may spend a clue to improve a skill, then discard this card. Uh, we have no clues. We need clues for other things. Thank you very much. See, imagine if this didn't have focus tokens. The amount of times I've used those, I would have had to have been using clues. So yeah, you need focus tokens. All right, so that was the reckoning on the Mythos cards. Now we move on to possessions and conditions. So we've got our, oh my gosh, she has four. He's got three. So he, oh jeez, he loses a health, oh man. We both lose a health. Ugh. So she's now at one health. He is now at three. Okay, it's the illnesses. All right, so I'm gonna do the back injury for Jack, test strength. Three fives, but that cursed condition. Oh, you know what? Duh. I should do. I should do the cursed first. Hello. I'm gonna be rolling dice. Okay, so I'm doing curse this time. There we go. And a four, five, or six. Discard the cursed condition. Okay. Now, and I will not count that roll because I backtracked. So now I will test my back injury. There we go. Oh. Ha! Ah, if I fail, flip the card. Uh, I have to do a rest to try to get rid of it. So I don't get rid of it, I just don't flip the card and have something bad happen. <sighs> okay. So now Mandy goes to her cursed. Roll one die. Nope. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so she's still cursed. Now she goes to the back injury. Test strength. Oh my god, just one. Wow! <laughs> so nothing happens there. On the debt. Some men have come to collect your debt. Flip this card. No tests, no rolls. Dark summoning. You were warned that failure to fulfill your obligations would have far-reaching consequences. If only you had realized just how far they were willing to go. Spawn one gate unless you spend one clue, then discard this card. Okay. Thank goodness she didn't lose health. Spawn one gate. It's starting to get bad here. The Himalayas. One monster. Whenever you spawn a gate, spawn a monster on it. Unless it tells you to move it elsewhere. The child of the goat. Okay, huh. Ooh, she has a reckoning. And the reckoning roll a die on a one or two advanced two by one. Okay. Whatever you say. That was the reckoning. Now I spawn another gate. This goes to Rome. Not good here, people. Serpent people, it's green. What happens when the sponsor spawn? Move it to the Amazon, okay. Okay, 
And now the rest of the mythos. You insist that you cannot leave. You have left your things at your hotel, but the priest tells you that there is no time. You have to go now and never look back. Over abundance, each investigator discards all but one of his item possessions. Then he does the same for his trinket possessions, ally assets, task assets, and spells. I have too much stuff and I can't carry it all as we flee. All right, discard all but one item. Can't I discard all but one, you know, condition? <laughs> Items, trinkets, allies, tasks, and spells. So let's see, she has, I guess if you have one, you get to keep it because she can't discard all but one if she only has one. So she has one trinket, that's it. She has nothing, oh, she has two trinkets. Ah, well that one needs a clue. This one needs spells, I don't have any spells. I might not end up with any spells. I'm getting rid of the ritual candles. That's lame. And then we have the gate box, the stone tablet, the cult, cult revolver as items. I'm going to get rid of everything but the revolver. This has got to go in here. Got shuffled. I'll shuffle later before I draw. And then he only has one trinket. Okay. Well, I feel lighter. That was fun. <laughs> okay, on to actions. He's going to stay at the Nile where those clues are, because we need them. And uh, he is definitely going to focus. Now, the cool thing is, at this point, he is no longer cursed. Yeah, because you know what? I, I chose to do that before the other ones. Aha! Oh, and you know what? Mythos happens before possessions anyway. So. Yes. Anyway, okay, so I'm taking a focus and I'm going to rest and I'm going to spend, I'm going to spend that resource to rest and get rid of two, uh, heal two health. So this three is going to become a one. So I'm back up to five total health for Monterey Jack. That's my two actions. Mandy is going to move down to this clue. She is still cursed, which sucks, but she is going to focus. Gotta get some good rolls here soon, right? Okay, Monterey is going to have a research counter at the Nile River, which is a wilderness. You stumble upon the lair of an unknown creature while it is away. You suspect the piles of bones that lie within might be human and turn to leave, but the creature returns while you are still present. A cultist monster ambushes you. If you defeat this monster, gain this clue. Alrighty. The cultist. Yeah. Ambushes. Now, because it's Abhoth, I have a Spawn of Abhoth special encounter, which counts as a combat encounter. Blah, 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 blah. Spawn of Abhoth. The writhing gray mass turns to face you, hundreds of tiny eyes blinking at you in fury. You consider your situation and prepare to go on the offensive. Resolve the pass effect to attack the beast, or resolve the fail effect to attempt a banishing ritual. I am going to attack it. Leaping toward your quarry. You attempt to gain the upper hand before it has a chance to move against you. Strength minus one. This is a combat encounter, so my strength would be seven with my Colt Revolver. Four, six, seven, oh. So it's only six because it's strength minus one. One, two, three. Okay. If you pass, this monster loses three health. Yes. So it is dead. Uh, oops. If you fail, I don't fail. Yay. Okay. I killed the monster. This is gonna go back to the pile of eight here. <sighs> Which me, this was for the research encounter. If you defeat the monster, gain this clue. Okay. So I gain a clue, I gain this clue. This goes to Jack. But also, ugh. 
After resolving a research encounter, if an investigator gains exactly one clue, gain an additional clue. So he gets another clue from the pool. Okay. Um, any other things with gaining clues? Not for Jack, I don't think. Okay, that basically does it for Jack's encounter. So he now has a clue, two clues, and can go try to do the mystery. Thank goodness. So Mandy is at space seven, where she's gonna try to have a research encounter. She is still cursed. And the trinket is no good. She's also almost dead. Oh my gosh. Maybe I should have healed. <laughs> oh well. She can get two clues also if she succeeds. Um, blah, 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 blah. All right. Uh, wilderness. You suspect the man who gave you this map did not have your best interests in mind. If you pass, you some. Oh. <laughs> Observation. There's three. Come on, alrighty. Oop, ah, it was a six, of course. Ah, if she wasn't cursed, that would have been good. Well, no good. If you fail, you travel in circles for days without finding anything of use, lose to sanity. Well, at least she lost the thing she has more of. She's at five, so now, She's going to be at four total lost, so seven minus four. She's now at three sanity. Okay, three sanity, one health. Sweet! <laughs> That's how I like it. She got nothing. It's time for Mythos. All right. <sighs> lots of omen, lots of green cards here. So the omen goes to blue. There are... That's red, that's blue. I think that's still the only blue. Okay. So Doom is out eight. We're gonna have a monster surge on that one spot. There's gonna be three monsters there now. Ooh, Leopard Man. Okay, Leopard Man. When this monster is spawned, move it to the Heart of Africa. Then search the deck for the Heart of Africa expedition for a Heart of Africa expedition counter. Shuffle the deck and place that on top. Interesting. So he's like, I'm gonna hang out at the heart of Africa, and you can come to have an expedition, but you gotta fight me. So the heart of Africa card's gonna go on top. Gonna shuffle real quick. Okay, there we go. What was that? That was the monster surge. Now we spawn a clue on space nine. Where is, nope. That was upside down. <laughs> Look at the map. It's space six. That is way over. Oh, it's right there. Hey, interesting. Mm. <laughs> Either way, she's already on a spot with a clue. Okay, ready. An ancient looking man hands you a heavy object wrapped in worn strips of fabric. Removing the wraps, you discover a black sculpture of the pharaoh Nefrenka, the messenger. Each investigator must resolve one of the following effects. Lose three health and three sanity. Oh, gosh. Impair three skills or gain a bane. Mandy's gonna gain a bane. She already has a curse, so it comes up cursed, she doesn't gain it, because you can't gain a curse if you already have... Oh, if you would gain another curse, flip the card. Okay, well, yeah, so she's gonna gain a bane. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Because I'm not impairing three skills, she's already got two impaired. And... Yeah, that's bad enough, but if she loses three health and three sanity, she's dead. She only has... two health. She, and, and only three sanity, so... But Monterey Jack, let's do him first. Gain a Bane. I could hope the Bane isn't a curse, but I do not want to get cursed again. That was, I gotta get through, I gotta get, uh, yeah, nope, that's not gonna do. He's at five health and five sanity. 
What's life if not live dangerously, huh? So he's now at two health and, I mean, two sanity and two health. And now she's gonna gain a Bane condition, so I gotta do that on the app. Okay, so she got a cursed condition. So I will flip this card. The yellow sign. At first you saw the sign everywhere. Then each time you saw it, it appeared to move, swirling and expanding. If you are in a city space, you are devoured. Which she is, so she's devoured. <laughs> okay, so Mandy's devoured. I will pick this up after I charge my phone. So, ha, that's pretty crazy. Uh, if I was not on a city space, I would just gain a blight condition. I mean, just a blight condition. But anyway, so I am devoured, and devoured is worse than dying. So I could have just taken the health and sanity. I took my chances. And, well, like I said, I was on a city space. That's why you don't look at the back of the conditions, because you never know what's going to happen. So, devoured. When you're devoured, you advance doom by one, you discard possessions. This, the, the investigator discards all possessions, gives cards health, sanity, and proven tokens, and returns the investigator sheet and token to the game. Basically, I don't even know what, it just, yeah, everything goes away. Then you pass the lead investigator if they were the lead investigator, and the player will choose a new investigator at the end of the mythos phase. So, defeated investigator, their card, or your, their character would lay down at the nearest city. You could go and have a dead or insane encounter and actually gain their possessions and some other cool stuff. I think you can retreat Doom and everything. So, so first things first, Advanced Doom. We are now at seven. The countdown is going. And we're basically going to discard everything of hers. And she is gone. So, I forgot to mention at the beginning, uh, I have also picked investigators that are from under the pyramids. So I picked my new investigator. Uh, well, let's see, what is this? This is the end of the Mythos phase, so Mythos phase is over, so now I pick a new investigator. Uh, all right, so we're going to be Sister Mary, so as an action, she's the nun. As an action, test will. For each success, you or another investigator on any space may discard one madness condition, or you and other investigators on your space add one to the result of each die roll as part of a bane or boon condition effect. So I thought this was... She, this would be a good one if I can't get, if those cursed conditions come back, at least she can have one added to her die rolls. If she's on the same space as Monterey, she helps him too. And my gosh, a bane condi a, a boon condition. Can you imagine having blessed? This would allow her to roll successes on three through six. It's pretty amazing. Um, okay, so yeah, so that's her thing. She is. Uh, not as high observation as Mandy was, but she has super high will, and everything else is average, and uh, she's 5 and 7, which is was the same as Mandy. She's going to start in South Africa, which is space 15. She's going to get holy water, ship ticket, and a clue. So, she has a ship ticket... Clue. I need the holy water. Okay, I got the holy water. So the holy water is a magical item. You may discard this card to gain plus five will and strength during a combat encounter. That's awesome. As an action, discard this card to choose an investigator on your space to gain a blessed condition. <laughs> Goodness. See, oh, this is this is this is good. It's good. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> All right, so she has those things. Oh yeah, now let's read her lore. Sister Mary speaks very little of her life before taking her vows. Like so many other young girls, she came from a small town and dreamed of something greater than a small life. The Lord provided. Through his path, she has become a lion of compassion and virtue. She has a natural humility and people are often surprised how driven she is to serve God's will. The church has sent her to South Africa to investigate a possibly demonic presence. Mary plans to approach the question as she always does, with a clear mind and an unshakable faith. 
Okay, so Mythos phase over. We're sorry to see you go, uh, Mandy, but you fought the good fight. Thank you for your help. All right, on to actions. Okay, well, this is gonna possibly hurt because Monterey Jack uh, is poisoned and he's got only two health left. So I think I've got to try to resolve the poison condition. So I'm going to be resting. So I and so that'll be cause me to flip this card. Otherwise, next reckoning I lose another health, and you can't recover health and sanity when you rest. So I got to get rid of this thing. Um, and he's got an injury, so a uh, back injury. So I'll also be able to roll um, roll a die to try to get rid of the injury when I rest. So I'm going to rest, but before I rest, what should, should I do anything? Probably gain a focus. So resting, so I flip this card. Medical assistance. The poison has spread and none of your supplies have been of any use. You'll have to find a well-supplied medical professional in the city. If you are on a city space, which I'm not, test minus one if you pass. If you fail, you cannot afford the antidote, you may gain a condition to discard this card. Okay, so since I'm not in a city space, I just flip it. Okay, so test observation. If I fail, I will have to gain a debt condition. But I, but I still discard the card, so I just have to be in a city to get rid of that. Okay, so resting just showed me what that is. I need to be in a city. So now we have Sister Mary. She has a clue, so she can go try to solve the mystery or try to get rid of the rumor because the next time the next time a reckoning happens, she will have to take a bane condition. And looking at the mythos cards I've already gotten, I am due for another yellow, which probably which has a reckoning, or a blue, which is one of those rumors again, so. I don't want a reckoning, so I'm either gonna get a reckoning or a or a blue. Okay, so to get to the rumor, it's gonna take a couple turns to get to the rumor over there. Uh, so space ten, one space away, uh, has one of the eldritch tokens. So since she has a clue, so I'm gonna try to solve the mystery over there. So she's gonna move there uh, and. Take a focus token. So, I the holy water can get me a blessed condition, but if I get blessed, and then the rumor gives me a bane condition and it's a curse condition, it's just going to get rid of my blessed condition right away. So I'm going to save that because right now she's still running. She's rolling normal. So that's the end of actions. Oh, that's right. Jack is at the Nile River where you can recover health and sanity. All right, so while I've already got two clue tokens, so even though I got another clue token there, I'm going to do the Nile River encounter. Okay, here we go. You gaze into the stars reflected in the river and see a doorway to another world opening. You try to recite a charm quickly enough to close it. Lore test. Two. See, I used to have Eric Weiss that gave me an extra die, but no more. Oh. I forgot to roll the die for my back injury. Ha! Ah. No, I need a five or six. Okay, so back to the lore test. Success. So nice not to be cursed again. If you fail, a creature steps through before I respond when I... Oh, thank God. All right. Well, I didn't... <laughs> That's for... really? Recover health and sanity, huh? Yeah, see, sometimes... It doesn't do what it says, but oh well. Probably better than something bad happening on a research encounter. And I've already got clues at this point. So, Nile River done, Jack, Monterey Jack done. Now it's time for Sister Mary to try this. As an encounter in a space containing an Eldritch token may spend one clue to explore the caverns beneath the Earth's surface. If he spends the clue, they draw and resolve a deep cavern Special encounter. So, spending the clue. To resolve a deep cavern, special encounter. 
You pursue one of the violent, deformed creatures deep into its subterranean lair. At long last, it gives up its flight and turns to face you. Resolve the pass effect to use the surrounding terrain to your advantage, or resolve the fail effect to engage the creature head-on. So... With the Holy Water, she can discard the card to gain plus five will and strength during a combat encounter, or I can keep it and be blessed when I discard it. I'm gonna go for the, uh, <laughs> does this count as a combat encounter? Oh, I don't know if this counts as a combat encounter. So as I was looking up this question, I discovered an answer to something else that happened already during this game. I guess that in the uh, errata, um, that spawn of Abhoth uh, encounter is not a combat encounter. So I could not have rolled all those dice. Uh, so, but that already happened. So uh, it's hard to keep up. This is like so many pages of errata. And you know, I've looked at the FAQ and in the Under the Pyramids manual, it specifically says they are combat encounters. So since those aren't, I'm gonna guess this Deep Caverns is not. Uh, so since she cannot add plus five will and strength, during a combat encounter, uh, I'm going to not spend the holy water. I'm going to do the first thing. I'm not going to try to fight this thing with only two strength. So you scan the area for anything you could use to your advantage. Observation minus one, which is two. Goody, which would have been the same as strength. Oh boy. No success. I spend the focus. Oh, thank goodness. If you pass, you manage to impale the creature with a stalactite. Place this Eldritch token on the act of mystery. Don't mind if I do, I will waste no time in doing that. If you fail, blah de blah de blah. All right. That is done. Okay. Good job, Sister Mary. See, she's good at destroying evil um okay that's encounters on to mythos oh boy there it is see we have the reckoning so huh, she's gonna gain a bane condition uh and so is monterey jack he doesn't have any bane conditions right now but we're gonna see this reckoning could really mess some stuff up okay so but first we gotta advance the omen track. We are now, oh, the omen track goes to green. There is one green here. That's red, blue, red. So we currently have two reds, but still one green and one blue, right? Am I missing anything? Two reds, two reds, three reds. Oh my gosh. Oof, when this hits red, that's gonna advance doom by three. Not good. Oh boy. Well, Hopefully we're beating the second mystery. Okay, so anyway, hit green. Now I advance the doom by one. So now we're at six. Now we have the reckoning. So monsters first. The only monster I think with a reckoning other than the cultist. Oh, serpent one has one too. So this guy is first going to move one space toward the nearest investigator. On this space or any space, this is one health sanity. So he's going to move even closer to. Monterey Jack. Now this serpent person, <laughs> the serpent people, roll one die. Six. On a one or two, the nearest investigator moves one space toward this monster. Oh, thank goodness. I hate when they move me around. Back to the Amazon with you. Okay, it's monsters. Now we have Abhoth is going to spawn a cultist. I, I probably should have killed that cultist. At least he'd be gone. On any wilderness space that does not already contain a cultist, I'm gonna go up to Tunguska because, oh, you know what? I never moved the expedition token down here, but I'm not gonna go to Tunguska anytime soon that I know of. So I'll just put that there with that other monster. But that is now one cultist, two cultists, three, four, five, six. 
Doom Advance by one, that's Abhoth's Reckoning effect. Mythos cards, so if we have, first we have if each investigator may spend one clue to improve one skill of his choice, then discard this card. Oh, Monterey Jack has two clues, but I don't know what the next, next mystery is. It might need clues. So, and as long as that's there, I get extra clues when I gain a clue from a research encounter. Still, I don't need, I don't feel like the need to improve a skill right now. And I want to keep those clues at the moment. So now, the Voodoo Curse. An investigator that does not have a Bane condition gains a Bane condition. Let me see what the Bane conditions are going to be. So Monterey Jack is cursed once again. And Sister Mary got a corruption. Doesn't sound good. Especially for a nun. <laughs> Let's see, what is corruption? You may gain one Eldritch token to reroll one die when resolving a test. If you would gain a boon condition, discard this card instead. On the Reckoning, gain one Eldritch token, then flip this card. Ah! So you can reroll dice with this, but you put Eldritch tokens on this. You also gain an Eldritch token when Reckoning comes up, then you flip this card, and I'm guessing the more Eldritch tokens that are on here, the worse it is because you've been using this power. Or who knows? Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's like, no, that doesn't make any sense. It's got to be <laughs> bad. Okay, so I'm going to keep that as long as I don't have Cursed because I need to be able to roll things good. Okay, so uh, that was the Mythos Reckoning. Now, Possessions and Conditions. All right, so Cursed Condition on Monterey Jack first. Roll one die. I needed a four, five, or six to discard this card. All right, on to the back injury, test strength. If you fail, flip this card. Spend a focus. I, I don't, I, if I take a damage, and then I take another damage, I'm dead. One more reroll. Come on, baby. Ah, oh, I need a six anyway. All right, well, we finally resolved this mystery. Now, maybe I should just die. <laughs> maybe I won't lose health. I don't know. I'm gonna, let's see what happens. I'm gonna keep the clues, or should I? Should I discard it? Okay, I'm gonna discard one clue. One more try and a roll to not flip the back injury condition. Yes! Oh, okay. So poisoned, I just lose a health. I just lose a health. I now have one health left. Yikes. Well, I hope that was worth it. Um, all right, on to the corruption. Gain one Eldritch token. Then flip this card. You may gain a dark pact condition to discard all of your Eldritch tokens. You wake coughing blood. Resolve each effect that applies based on the number of Eldritch tokens you have. One or more, gain one injury or illness condition for each Eldritch token you have. Three plus, resolve the reckoning effect of each of your injury and illness conditions, treating all die rolls as ones. What? Uh, yeah. I mean, like a back injury is test strength and you gotta pass so how uh, it's like how do you pass that unless some of the injuries a one is good or bad i don't know or illnesses okay well gain one injury for each elder how do i get rid of this card you gain a dark pack condition to discard all of your elders tokens but i this stays oh when you gain a boon you can discard this card ah instead of gaining the boon that's the only way to get rid of this card. So I either got to gain a Dark Pact to just get rid of my Eldritch tokens, or I can gain an Injury or Illness for each Eldritch token. Next Reckoning, if I don't get rid of this token, there's going to be two, and I'll have to gain two. Then I'll have to, after the third one, I'll have to resolve all of my Injury or Illness. I think before, before I gain the Dark Pact, I'm going to gain an Injury condition for the one Eldritch Horror token I have. 
All right, here's my injury condition, head injury. When you perform a rest action, you cannot recover sanity. Roll one die on a four, five, or six discard on a reckoning test strength, and if you fail, flip. So it's similar to the back injury, except I can't recover sanity. All right, that concludes the reckoning. Now we spawn a gate. Oh boy, this is getting gnarly. On Arkham, and a monster. Where did I get? A riot. A riot in Arkham. That's about right. They're a wily bunch over there. And now, on to the rest. It's white. Oh boy. If this vision is true, you have confronted the Dark Pharaoh many times over the course of many lives. Each incarnation has been preparing you for this final battle. Visions of past lives. The lead investigator tests will. Then they improve a number of skills equal to this test result. All right, Monterey Jack is still the lead investigator and no successes, but that's fine. Uh, it's nothing bad on top of the normal effects. So I'm good. All right, on to actions. Oh, wait, it's time for this. Okay. Yep, I spent the clue. Did the Deep Cavern Special Encounter at the end of the Mythos phase. If there are Eldritch Tokens on this card equal to half the number of investigators, solve this mystery. Yes, there are now two solved. One more to go. Touched by Abhoth. Those who make contact with the mind of the source of all uncleanliness are rarely ever the same again. They revel in dirt and grime and seek only to spread filth during the remainder of their short lives. When this card enters play, each investigator places one Eldritch Token on the nearest city space that does not contain an Eldritch Token. Do I leave the Eldritch Tokens from the last thing? Oh, those were all wilderness spaces, yep. As an encounter, an investigator on a space containing an Eldritch Token may attempt to free the victim's mind from Abhoth's grasp with will minus one. If he passes, he may spend one clue to place that Eldritch Token on this card. At the end of the Mythos phase, if there are Eldritch Tokens, on this card equal to number of investigators to solve this mystery. Okay, so I need to twice go to, let's see, each investigator. Okay, so you want to put one Eldritch token. I don't think they thought about the fact, it just says on a space containing an Eldritch token. I don't think they thought about the fact that there will be Eldritch tokens because of the last mystery, which put them, put them on some wilderness spaces. <laughs> or I can just read it as it is. <laughs> anyway, okay. So I'm going to put an Eldritch Token on a city space. The nearest city, city, city space to my investigators that does not contain an Eldritch Token. Then i got to do Will minus one, and i got to spend a clue. Monterey Jack has a clue. She does not. She needs to go get one. All right. Sister Mary. Okay. All right. Clues again. I shouldn't have spent that clue. Well... Did not have to resolve the back injury card, okay. So not too bad. Okay, here we go now. So for Monterey Jack, I'm gonna put an Eldritch token on Alexandria. And for Sister Mary, I'm gonna put it on space 15. I could have put it in Rome where I can improve uh, Will, but I've already got four Will. And if I'm 15, I'm close to 17, which can get me to Egypt. Or I mean, I can move to the heart of Africa and then move to the Nile. But yeah, she's gonna need a clue first, so regardless. there The closest clue to her is over on space seven, or, wait a minute, the nearest city space, okay. So technically, even local paths, uh, it's still spaces. So the pyramids could take me to a local path to Alexandria, and I can put another Eldritch token there. Oh, it already has one. Anyway, I can do that anyway. Or I could put it on Cairo, but that would be dumb because there's monsters there. So I was going to say, the clues, the heart of Africa. There is a clue in the heart of Africa, but I can't encounter that without fighting this leopard man, which has a will of one, strength of two, and, well, it's not that strong, but she is not entirely that strong either. I would need to roll two successes on the strength test. Cool. This is an interesting choice to make. Or I could just spend the holy water <laughs> and get a lot of dice and hopefully kill the thing. Because when I'm in the heart of Africa, then I can, I, well, I will have a clue there, and then I could move, well, I can move right back. There's also another clue in the Nile River. I shouldn't need two clues. 
Yeah, you know what? This is getting close. I am going to... Oh, I can't get there in one move. Oh, so you know what? I forgot that I have a ship ticket that I started with. So I can get to this clue this turn. I'm gonna travel, spend the ship ticket to get to that clue. There we are. And then, yeah, need to focus. What is up? <laughs> okay, okay, unless I counted things wrong, I'm not gonna get a reckoning this round. So this is not gonna happen yet. Now, this says if I would gain a boon condition, I discard this card instead. So if I were to discard the Holy Water to get blessed, I would have to actually just use it to get rid of corruption, which I'm not ready to do yet. So, yeah. So I traveled and focused. I'm good. At least I'm not cursed right now. <laughs> Why do I say such things? Oh, you know what? I moved her first. I took her actions first, but it doesn't make any difference. So now, although I should make her lead investigator because anything that hits the lead investigator is going to damage Monterey Jack big time. Okay, so she, yes, she's lead investigator. She went first. Now Monterey Jack is going to travel to Tel Alamarna along the ship path and go to Alexandria. He's going to encounter that token for the mystery. So that's one action. So for sure going to focus. He is still cursed. Gosh. We'll see what happens. And it's got to do will minus one. He's got to add a two and roll the six. Well, I don't know. Sometimes I have luck rolling, sometimes I don't. All right, it is now her turn. She's going to try to gain that clue with a research encounter. Sister Mary. On a city space. A popular traveling circus is in town, and a huge crowd is formed, waiting for a chance to see a dead alien beast. You too are curious to see what the tent holds, but the line is exceptionally long. You may become delayed to gain this clue. Ah, oh, it's criminy. Oh well, sure, I'm delayed. Basically, if you're delayed, you just lay down. On your next turn, you don't take any actions, you stand up. So she's going to not be able to move anywhere next turn, which is great, because that's what I needed the clue for, to go do the thing, but it's not, whatever. Okay, so clarifying about the Eldritch tokens that were already out there from the previous uh, mystery, when you, uh, when you, when the active mystery is solved, discard all tokens on it or placed by it. Okay, so that was clear. That's a thing you're supposed to do. Sometimes you forget when when you don't get mysteries that do that kind of thing. So the Eldritch tokens that were on Wilderness Spaces need to be taken away. That's the one I need. And there were four, but I used the other one for the last mystery. Alrighty then. So Sister Mary is delayed. Now, Monterey Jack on a space containing Eldritch token may attempt to free the victim's mind from Abhoth's grasp. Abhoth's grasp. Will minus one. Which is one. <laughs> and I'm cursed. Ugh. Spend the focus. Nope. So, no success. He'll just stay there. That's the end of encounters. Time for Mythos. All right, spawn a clue. The Himalayas. Put a rumor token on Istanbul. Okay. Doctors have no explanation for the virulence of the disease, but you know that on occasion, a reckless wizard will invoke Hastalik to serve his dark purpose. The Contagion, an ongoing rumor. As an encounter, an investigator on Istanbul may attempt to stop the spreading illness at its source. Observation test, if he passes, he may spend clues equal to half the number of investigators to solve this rumor. When there are no Eldritch tokens on this card, each investigator loses three health, then solve this rumor. So this, this card's gonna get three tokens put on it. Every time there's a reckoning, the lead investigator gains one illness condition, then discard one Eldritch token from this card for each illness condition he has. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, so good. 
Wonderful. Okay. So that's on Istanbul. Put this over here. Three Aldrich tokens go on there. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the end of the mythos. Back to action. So my lead investigator, Sister Mary, stands up and stays there. Which is silly. And now Monterey can take focus because he's staying in Alexandria. And I'm gonna rest again so that I can get rid of this. Hopefully, when you perform rest action, you cannot recover health nor sanity. I'll put this card in. Ooh. Did I? Oh, yes. Three, four, five. Yep, I only have one health left. So the next reckoning that comes up, he's dead if I can't heal. So when you perform a rest action, you cannot. Recover health or sanity, but flip this card. Yeah, I did this before. And what was the thing? Test. Influence minus one. Gosh. Ah, because I'm cursed. That sucks. Oh, yes. That's right. Last time I wasn't on a city space. But now I am. So I did the test. If you fail, you cannot afford the antidote. You may gain a debt condition to discard this card. Okay. This card is gone. Bye bye, poisoned. All right, uh. That was his rest. And when I perform a rest, I may roll one die and a five or six discard the back injury. Nope, it's a four. All right, back to Sister Mary. She is just on a regular space, so she will have a regular encounter on a city space. If you try to convince a notorious. Not if. You try to convince an, an you try to convince a notorious grifter to teach you some tricks. If you pass, uh, influence, which is two. Nope. Focus. Yes. If you pass, he takes a liking to you and shows you how to deceive and avoid being deceived. Improve observation. Hooray! Oh, my observation is now effectively four. Okay, that's her encounter. Now back to Monterey Jack doing the will minus one for the mystery. Nope. It's ridiculous. Nope. Doesn't count. Come on. So, still failing. Got curse condition. I didn't even roll a five though, so what, what, whatever. That's the end of encounters. Time for Mythos and Monterey's. Oh, he lost the, uh, that's right. We'll see. He doesn't have the poisoned anymore, so. Here we go. Advance the omen and a reckoning, then a gate. Okay, so advance the omen goes to blue. I only have one blue gate still, I think. Red, red, oh my gosh, there's like four reds though. That is going to be bad. That's probably going to trigger awakening. Four or three, one, two, three, yep, four reds, only one blue. I did advance that, right? Nope. <laughs> four, yep, so the next omen track, Abhoth will awaken. Ugh. Gosh, this curse thing. It's really hurt. Me. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Okay. So I did omen. Now I got to do reckonings. All right. So monsters first. This thing moves towards the closest investigator, which would be who is on space seventeen. Will be towards Monterey Jack. So on space seventeen, going to move to Cairo. Uh oh. And every investigator on his space or adjacent loses one health and sanity. He's dead. <laughs> oh, no. Pretty sure that's right. Space 17 is a local path. Well, Space 17 exists on the Egypt sideboard. So this banner. So when you're on Space 17, you are also here. You're right here. So it's one movement to this space which is then a local path to Monterey, which is considered adjacent. Well, that's it. All that work. <laughs> and he takes the seventh health hit and is dead. Okay. Keep in mind, we are in the reckoning effect. 
of the mythos. When an investigator has lost all health or sanity, he is immediately defeated. So advance doom by one. Move the investigator token to the nearest city space, which is where he is. Then lay the investigator token on its side with the health token on it to indicate the investigator has lost all health or with sanity. Indicate sanity. Alrighty. So he is now dead. Or at least he's defeated. He might be in a hospital. I don't know. Um, we wouldn't know until we read the other side. The investigator discards all condition cards, health, sanity, and improvement tokens, and places his possessions on his investigator sheet. So, all of this. Ugh. This is all gonna go away. Conditions are gone. Possessions go on this card. So then you keep the sheet face up and place it in a common area out of the way. You pass the lead investigator if they were the lead investigator. Oh, I think his clue goes on there too, because it's like information. Yes, clues are possessions, if I remember correctly. Yep. Clue tokens, travel ticket tokens, asset cards, artifact cards, spell cards, and maybe also, I'm assuming resources count. Focus tokens, probably not. It's like the person focused. Okay, anyway, um, so that's it. It's defeated. I will be choosing a new investigator at the end of the Mythos phase, but after that, during the encounter phase, an investigator on a space containing a defeated investigator token may encounter it by resolving the defeated investigator encounter on the back of the investigator sheet. The investigator resolves the crippled effect on the back of the defeated investigator sheet if the defeated investigator's token has a health token on it or the insane effect if it has a sanity token on it. All right? So, we will finish up the mythos. We were still doing Reckoning. That was the first monster. Serpent people. When this monster is spawned, roll a die on a one or two of the nearest investigators. <laughs> of course, on a one or two, the nearest investigator moves one space toward this monster, which is right to it. Excellent. Although, that doesn't mean I have to fight it. Oops. Yeah. Maybe I could take it on anyway. I don't know. I gotta get to over here. <laughs> uh, Alright. Um, reckoning. So, now the Ancient One. We spawn a... I think that was the only, only, the, the only two monsters. Oh, no. That thing over there has one. The Dole Whip. <laughs> Uh, move this monster one space toward the- oh, uh, duh, I already did that. Yeah, that's right, he came from over there. Just kidding, so that's it, okay. So, a cultist to go on a wilderness with no other cultists. I'm gonna put it out there. And if there's six or more advanced doom, boogoosh! Yeah, this is gonna happen later, or soon, or whatever. Aboth is gonna awaken. Okay, Mythos cards. So I've got the gain a boon, a bane, if I don't already have one. So she's already got one. She has, doesn't gain one, and there's no other investigator to gain one. So the lead investigator gains one illness condition, then discard one elder's token from this card. So she's going to gain an illness condition. Oh, this lead investigator gains one illness condition, then discard one elder token from this card for each illness condition. He has, she has, they have. When there are no Eldritch tokens on this card, each investigator loses three health. Okay, so she's gonna have a single illness. So she's going to... So I'm, I'm removing one, one token. The illness is diseased. Very pretty. When you perform a rest action, roll one die on a five or six, discard this card on a reckoning test strength minus one. If you fail, flip this card. Okay, so she is now diseased and that is part of, oh, that's, and that's gonna happen now because I gotta resolve those next. And this, each investigator may spend one clue to improve one skill of their choice and discard this card. No, I'm gonna leave that there. So that's the Mythos cards. Now she's got to do all her stuff. So corruption, gain an Elder's token, then flip this card. Test strength if you fail, flip this card. 
to strength minus one if you fail flip this card. I know. I don't know what to do first. These all suck. I'm going to do... Hmm. What happened last time? Gain an injury or illness condition. Oh, did I resolve it? I suppose I needed to resolve the one I received. I forgot to. Oh, well. Okay. Well, I'm going to gain a dark pack condition this time just to get rid of those and not have to deal with that. So that still remains, though. Okay. Yeah, that's right. When you get things with reckonings during the reckoning, you don't get more. So both of these have come up during the Reckoning. So I did this, now finally the Head Injury Test Strength. Yay! I pass, so I don't flip the card. Okay, now next Reckoning, all of these will happen. Now we spawn a gate in the heart of Africa. This place is going crazy. Okay, oh, the cultist. Okay. At the end of the ordeal, you have been left on your back, uncertain if you are lucky to be alive or simply doomed to survive. Did we make it? Each investigator rolls one die and resolves the matching effect. One to two, he gains a one bane condition. Three to five, gains a clue. Six, gains a boon condition. Rolls one die. Six. Gains a boon, which will get rid of my corruption. Because if you would gain a boon, instead discard this card. Goodbye, corruption. Peace out. Nobody needed you anyway. That's the mythos. How many I got left? Yeah, this game's going to end one way or another. Five mythos cards left. No more. Yeah, but Ab Abha's going to awaken on the next omen. That ends the mythos. Let's pick a new investigator. Okay, so people familiar with the game will probably already guess who I just grabbed. Yep, Minty Fan, the secretary, for a few reasons. So her action, you and another investigator on your space each gain one travel ticket of your choice. And then you and an other investigators on your space each gain plus one to all skills if there is another investigator on your space or you have one or more ally assets. So it's just kind of passive if she's on a space with anyone else, it's plus one to all skills. But she comes out in Tokyo, which is good, because then I'm fairly close to Space 17 that can get me here, and then I can get over here to Alexandria, where Monterey Jack is, so I can have an encounter with him and where his token is, so I can try to solve, help solve the mystery. And she also gets a cryptic text, unique asset, and a, and a clue, so I also need a clue so now I don't have to try to go get a clue in order to solve the mystery thing. So anyway, Fan Ti Min's father came to Seoul from Cochinchina to use his diplomatic savvy in dealing with foreign business interests. Once grown, Min proved to be just as adept in business. She re reordered her name on the style of Westerners and took a job in Tokyo as her secretary to an employer, uh, to an importer of strange antiquities. More than just an employer, Mr. Thomas was Min's friend, but now he has been murdered. Armed only with the strange text Mr. Thomas left for her and her own keen mind, Min has vowed to find out why. So she's in Tokyo, she needs a cryptic text unique asset and a clue. Okay, so there's her clue and here's the cryptic text. Action, you attempt to decipher a cryptic message in the text, lore check. If you pass, you uncover secrets that could alter the fate of humanity. Flip this card. Okay, so lore check, she is a three, not bad. Okay, and yep, that's finally the end of the round. All right, on to actions. Okay, so I could try to fight this monster because if the reckoning comes up, it could pull me back, but that's only on a run roll of one or two. So I'm gonna take the chance. I need to get to space 15 so she can try to solve the mystery with her clue before all complete hell breaks loose. So she's gonna move to Buenos Aires. I have no tickets, so I can't move any further. And I'm going to focus because I'm probably gonna need that eventually. And that's it. Okay, so now it is Minty Fan's turn. She is going to do take a ship ticket, but uh, what is this guy gonna do? Because now she's gonna be right next to this thing. Which on a reckoning moves her and on the space, this is a health insanity, okay. Well, I gotta get there. 
Yeah, and that's the fastest way that I can see. So she's gonna take a ship ticket and travel to space 17. Oop, oop, travel, spend the ship ticket. That's her two actions. Time for encounters. So, Sister Mary's in Buenos Aires. You are transported to an odd ship flying over Villa Urquiza. There, Migo, there, Migo perform experiments. Will check. She's a four. That's good. Says I. <laughs> Success. If you pass, you endure their tests and unlock parts of your mind. Gain one non-incantation spell. If you fail, there were... Oh, uh, yeah. All right, a non-incantation spell. Okay, first one on the bottom was called the Storm. It's a ritual. Choose a monster on your space and test will minus one. If you pass, the chosen monster loses three health, then flip the card. That's interesting. Okay. Okay, so on to Min. She's on space 17. So a general encounter. City space. You dream of Nomqua, an abhorrent creature living beneath the moon's surface. You sense that it wants to make an exchange, and it entices you with a mysterious rarity in exchange for its freedom. You may advance the omen by one to gain the moon something. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would uh, cause uh, Abhoth to awaken. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm done with that. That's encounters. <laughs> but see what happens. I think there's two greens. Let's see. There's six in step three. Okay. What was my last card? My last card I think was yellow. So there are three yellows and two greens left in here. Let's see what I got. <sighs> nope. <laughs> no luck. No such luck. Advance the omen. Red. There's like four red gates. Doom is to zero. Aboth will awaken. Oh, this is fun. I've actually rarely had things awaken in my not so limited, but still semi limited amount of plays. If an effect advances Doom beyond the zero space, Doom advances to the zero. The Ancient One awakens, and then Doom continues to advance using the Ancient One's rules for advancing Doom. Alrighty. So. Does the Ancient One awaken immediately and do stuff? Ancient One... Okay, so... Abhoth awakens. We'll flip this sheet. Let's remember, we are right in the middle of a... Mythos, if I survive this. This was just Advance the Omen track. Okay. Abhoth awakens! Spawn the Abhoth epic monster on Space Nine. Then spawn all but three cultist monsters from this sheet. They are already spawned. Each on a wilderness space that does not contain a cultist monster. So they're already out there. Reign of Filth, the final mystery. For the first time in millennia, Abhoth has ventured forth from its subterranean lair. Its children swarm through the streets of every major city, and civilization is on the verge of collapse. Humanity is on its last legs. Soon, Abhoth will reign over all. The Abhoth epic monster cannot lose health unless three mysteries have been solved. So, I still have to solve that last mystery. This ain't gonna happen. When the Abhoth epic monster has been defeated, the final mystery is solved and investigators win the game. So now the cultists are strength four, and when investigator comes to cultist monster, he draws, still does the spawn of Abhoth, which does not count as a combat encounter, I learned. Okay, the source of uncleanliness. Each time Doom would advance, spawn one cultist monster on a wilderness space that does not contain a cultist monster. Then, if there are no cultist monsters on this sheet, Investigators lose the game. Okay, so Doom was on two, right? So it's gonna go two more. So it's gonna spawn two of the three left. Uh I think I think another Doom's gonna happen before before we get we even finish this. Okay, and with a reckoning, which we're gonna resolve, spawn one cultist monster on a wilderness space. Okay, yeah, game over. Because Two more are going to come out, then the Reckoning is going to happen, and another Cultist Monster is going to spawn. That's going to use the last one from there. And game over. Abhoth awoke and ended the game. Well, that was fun. 
Uh, my first loss on my videos, I only have two others, but those ones though, both of those games, I played two or three practice games and lost them. So when I won those on video, that was a lot of fun, especially Cities in Ruin. Oh, Cities in Ruin is so hard. I just got lucky when I recorded. I had a pretty mellow first half of the game. At the end of the game, it was down to the wire. You should watch that video if you haven't. Um, the other one was the Dreamlands. But anyway, I, I want to know what would have happened had I found Monterey Jack. Okay. A lifetime of venom from spiders, scorpions, and snakes is taking its final toll on Jack. Even as he struggles to breathe, he shares anecdotes about each of his belongings. Gain all of his possessions, so I would have gotten that clue. Although I already have a clue. But anyway. Gain all of his possessions. He tells you he buried his best friends in a field, but he cannot remember where. You spend hours digging up that field. Strength test. If you pass, you discover Jack was not lying. Gain two relic unique assets. If you fail, you exhaust yourself with no result. Whether you pass or not, discard to investigate. Okay. So that would have been cool. I would have got treasure map, his 45 Colt revolver, and a couple of relics if I passed that test. Um, let's see. Gosh. I want to know what's on this other, si other side of this. So... I'll have to play another game with Mintifan to find out. Um, let's see. Had Min made it to the Elder's Token before Abhoth awoke? No minus one. She's two. Oh yeah. Nope. <laughs> what about Sister Mary? She would have made it to the Elder's Token on her next turn for sure. And I was going to discard the holy water to be blessed, as long as I didn't. Well, the reckoning would have possibly brought a cursed, but it's just a bane condition, so it might have not been cursed. Anyway, just curious. Booyah. Pass. I could have, so I would have had the mystery half solved on the next turn. But, them's the breaks. Um, because yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't have done the Monterey Jack thing if Min, if Min could have, because I could have moved through Cairo and then moved to Cairo and then take a local path to Alexandria and I would have encountered the token on her next turn. So, who knows, maybe two turns later, maybe I was two turns, maybe I was two turns away from winning the game. Oh no, but then, well, as long as Abhoth hadn't been awakened. Then I would have had to defeat the Aboth. Uh, epic monster. Let's find that and look at it. All right. Here it is. Kind of looks like the Ogru, Ogru Jihad from Hellboy or sort of the thing from Stranger Things or any other number of clouded tentacle monsters coming from the sky to devour humanity. Oh, wait. This is Azathoth. <laughs> Not Abhoth. It's really? Oh, it's not Spawn of Abhoth. That's the encounters. It's just Abhoth epic monster. Okay, let me see. Okay, here's here's the Abhoth epic monster. Looks just like the on the card and on everything else with Abhoth. So it's will minus two, strength minus two. Need a four or will take damage in those things. Toughness is equal to number of investigators plus three, so toughness is five. That's pretty t pretty rough. Min's got a strength of two, so it should be rolling a one. A will of two should be rolling a one. Uh, Sister Mary has a will of four, so it would be rolling two. And so minimum would take two um, san sanity damage. So gosh, once once things awaken, it's very hard to win. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching me play this crazy game. And uh, I hope you will check out my other videos and subscribe if you haven't and if you enjoyed this. And please give the video a like also if you enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, game on, end of line.